biology. So now let's begin with the first part uh, of the dermis, or the first structure of the dermis, which is now the, the sweat gland. So let's begin with the sweat gland. So for the sweat gland, we see that these are mainly made up of coiled tubes of secretory cells that extend into long tubes on the surface of the skin. Because as you can see this diagram, we have the sweat gland. So anytime you will, uh, you will hear a gland or you come across a gland, gland means that this gland secretes something. So a gland is something that secretes another thing or secretes another fluid which is used somewhere else. So anytime you will see gland, know that it produces or it secretes something. In this case, we have the sweat gland. So the function of the sweat gland is to produce sweat or is to secrete sweat. So after the sweat gland has secreted sweat, so the sweat travels through the, the sweat duct. Duct in biology means anything that a fluid can be able to pass through. So after a sweat gland producing sweat, so the sweat moves through the sweat duct and uh, onto the surface of the skin whereby we have the sweat pore. So the sweat pore, P-O-R-E. So the pore means an opening of the duct. So the opening of the duct is referred to as the pore. So here, the sweat glands produces the sweat. Sweat moves through the sweat, uh, sweat duct and onto the skin surface and comes out of the sweat duct by the use of the sweat pore. So that is exactly the mechanism of uh, sweat and the depositing of the sweat to the skin. So for the sweat, we see that it contains different mineral salts such as sodium chloride, traces of urea, traces of lactic acid also. So these are the different components which can be found embedded in the sweat. So the main function of the sweat is to cool the body. So that is the main function of the sweat. So when the temperatures are very high or when the temperatures are high, what happens is that the sweat is going to, de to be deposited on the surface of the skin. So that is not uh, the cooling process. So the cooling process begins by sweating being deposited on the surface of the skin. It doesn't end there. So apart from sweat being deposited on the skin, so the next step is that uh, as soon as it is deposited on the skin, so if cold air passes over the sweat, if cold air passes over the sweat, what is going to happen is that that sweat is going to absorb the cold air and then since blood capillaries are found beneath the skin, so these blood capillaries circulating the blood, they are going to take up that cold temperature and then that cold temperature is going to enter into the blood. As soon as that cold temperature has entered into the blood, it's going to circulate the body. As it circulates the body, it's going to bring a cooling effect. So that is the function of the sweat being deposited on the skin. It is deposited there so that cold temperatures can pass over and then bring a cooling effect of the body. So apart from that, let's now look at the blood vessels and the lymph vessels. So for the blood vessels simply, they contain uh, the different blood cells which supply nutrients and remove uh, harmful waste materials from, from the skin. Example, we have nitrogenous waste and also we have respiratory gases like carbon dioxide from the cells and the tissues of the body. So apart from that, the other function of the blood vessels and the lymphatic vessels is also to regulate the body temperature. So that's the function, is to regulate the body temperature. As well, you see that the lymphatic vessels also contains the lymphocytes, which are white blood cells, responsible for fighting harmful microorganisms in the skin. So maybe if a harmful microorganism tried to enter through the skin, so we have the lymph vessels which will produce the lymphocytes, these lymphocytes are going to destroy the harmful bacteria or the pathogen uh, before it invades other parts of the skin or other parts of the body. So apart from that, uh, the other function of the lymphatic vessel is that it drains excess tissue fluid and then it also brings it back into the bloodstream. So that is also the other function of the lymphatic vessel that we studied in the topic of transport in plants and animals as we are beginning uh, form two work. So apart from that, the next uh, part of the skin, we have the nerve endings. So simply, the function of the nerve cells or the nerve endings is irritability, is to detect changes in the environment around the skin. So if someone is feeling cold, the nerve endings are going to detect this change. If someone has been pierced, the nerve endings in the skin are going to detect this change. 
Maybe if someone is feeling pleasure, it's the nerve endings that they, uh, of the skin. It's the nerve endings that they are the ones responsible for receiving these stimuli and taking the signal to the brain to report that this person is feeling either pleasure, is feeling pain, or is feeling any form of pressure in this part of the body. So simply, the function of nerve ending is irritability, just to detect the changes in environment inside the skin or around the skin. That's the function of the nerve endings. So after that, we now have the hair. So for the hair, we see that it mainly uh, arises from the root hair or the hair papilla, from whereby the root hair develops. So that is exactly where the hair develops. Then after it, it has elongated, we can be able now to see it on the surface of the skin. So the function of hair on the skin is thermoregulation. So that's the main function of hair on the skin thermoregulation uh, whereby like the people living in hot environmental conditions you'll realize that they do not have hairs on the skin so the hairs on the skin are very minute or simply they are not there or if they are there they are very they are very tiny or very small these are the people living in hot environmental weather conditions but the people living in maybe place like greenland or a uh, place whereby there is very cold temperature. So these people will realize that there are very many hairs on the surface of the skin. Very many hairs on the surface of the skin. So this brings us now to now define and describe the functions of hair on the skin. So the functions of hair on the skin is thermoregulation. So this thermoregulation simply means the regulation of temperature, uh, regulation of temperature in the body. So when one is feeling cold, what happens is that the hairs on the skin are going to erect. They are going to stand upright, as we had said. So when one is feeling cold, the hairs on the skin are going to stand upright. If the hairs on the skin are going to stand upright, they are going to trap moisture and warm air between them. So if they trap moisture and warm air between them, it will mean that if the cold temperature tries to come and be in contact with the skin, it won't be possible. So this cold temperature is going to, uh, like if this cold temperature comes, it is going to find that already the surface of the skin has been occupied by warm air. So it's like that cold temperature will only bounce off and leave. So by this bouncing off and leave, we'll see that the hairs will have managed to keep the body warm uh, by preventing cold temperatures from being into contact with the skin of the body. But when the temperatures are very hot, what happens is that the hairs on the skin are going to lie flat on the body. Since they lie flat on the body, they'll allow cold temperatures to be in contact with the skin. So if cold temperatures will be in contact with the skin, it will mean that, uh, not cold temperatures, if cold wind or cold air will be in contact with the skin, it will mean that that cold temperature uh, will enter into the skin. How will it enter into the skin? Remember the process of sweating. So, sweat will be deposited on the surface of the skin. After sweat has been deposited on the surface of the skin, so that cold temperatures will be in contact with the sweat. After the cold temperature has been in contact with the sweat, what is going to happen is that, that cold temperature is going to be taken inside the skin. After being taken inside the skin, the blood vessels are going to take up this cold temperature, take it to the blood flowing inside, then circulate it through the body. As this happens, it will bring a cooling effect to the whole body and therefore the temperatures of that person in very hot environment are going to be brought back to normal so basically that's the function of the hairs on the skin thermoregulation when it is very hot the hairs on the skin are going to be erect in order to trap warm air and prevent cold air from being in contact with the skin when the temperatures are very uh, are very cold now when the temperatures are cold that's what will happen so the hairs are going to erect to trap warm air but when the temperatures are very hot the hairs are going to lie flat the person is going to sweat and then the sweat is going to take in cold temperatures in the body and then everything follows up from there so that is basically the functions of the the functions of the hair on the skin so how is it possible for the hairs to be able to erect on the skin or lie down flat on the skin to erect and lie down flat on the skin so by this we now introduce the erector pili muscles as you can see we have the erector pili muscles which is attached to the hair and then attached uh, attached also to the dermis so 
if this erector pili muscle contracts, it's going to pull the, the hair upright. So the hair is going to stand upright. So basically, the erector pili muscle, its function is to control the, the movement of the hair follicle on the skin. So its function is only to control the movement. So if it contracts, the hair is going to stand upright. If it relaxes, the hair is going to lie down flat on the skin. So you see that this muscle constantly goes through contraction and relaxation in order to alter the position of the hair on the surface of the skin depending on the environmental condition. So apart from that, we see that mm, cats and dogs, cats, dogs, and maybe mice, they have long whiskers, those two whiskers. Those are modified hairs. So they have modified hairs, also porcupines. So they have very much modified hairs. Like for example, for the cats and the dogs, so those modified hairs which are called whiskers, they, mainly, they are mainly used to sense touch and to sense environmental conditions. Those are the functions of the whiskers. And also we have the porcupines. Uh, the porcupines and the stiff horns of the rhino. So the porcupines, those spines, they are modified hairs. Also that cast stiff horn of the rhino, these are also modified hairs, which, uh, which are used by these organisms to, for defense mechanism, in order to protect themselves against predators, protect themselves against danger. So if any danger tries to come about, so these modified hairs are going to protect them. So also we see that hairs can be modified to form long whiskers uh, for, sensing sen uh, for sensing touch, for the cats, the dogs, etc., and the mice, and the rats, and the guinea pigs, etc. And also they can be used as defense mechanism, for example, the porcupines, the rhinoceros, uh, etc. So as to be able to protect themselves from the different types of danger that they may encounter. Biology.